and welcome back to the Regimentals YouTube channel. Today is my annual Christmas um, update video. Uh, sadly to disappoint, um, I'm not going to be doing bloopers this year. Um, I think maybe I've just got too good at doing the videos that I don't actually have any bloopers anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do in today's video, it's been quite a few weeks since we've done a big update, so I'm going to focus mostly on actual militaria. Um, Enough of me and my silly face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feature some of the items that are going to be on this update. Hopefully try and take my time so you can actually look at the items. Yeah, it will give you a, a good insight of, of what's going to be on Friday's update. Um, and then I might squeeze in one more video before the end of the year. So without further ado, I'm just going to go straight in. As you can see, everything um, that's here on the table, um, you saw them a few minutes ago in the, in, in the intro to this. Um, so I'm just going to run through what there is here and explain um, some details about those pieces. So starting at this end here, this is a Hertfordshire officer's uh, yeomanry helmet. Now, it's su absolutely superb condition. You very rarely see them in, in this kind of condition and the quality on it is absolutely brilliant. Moving on to the next item, this is a Prussian artillery pickle hull. Uh, nothing spectacular about it but it's just a, a very nice condition example. This next item is the Barden early style pickle hull. It's um, as you can tell by the shape a slightly different um, longer version as the early models were. This is an NCO's version with the domed rivets at the top uh, and the solid crown. Moving on to this beautiful Prussian General's pickle hull. The um, full enamel badge is absolutely stunning on this. Lovely quality and condition inside as well. Really nice thing. This next helmet is an extremely rare Hess Lieb Regiment pickle hull. Really beautiful. Uh, the 1621 scroll on the top. Very nice condition inside as well. Uh, the, uh, the Hessian cockade there on the side along with the national cockade. And then this is uh, an item that my friend Mickey Baldwin would have loved. He was the author of the Felder um, series and he had a beautiful one of these in his collection. This is a field grey um, Carassia um, helmet. A lovely shape to it but really nice to find with that field grey paint on it including the badge in field grey as well. This here now we have two um, front and back plates uh, for the German Carassiers. Uh, a, a fairly standard one here, but this one here is a Jaeger Souffert man's front and back plate. It's c absolutely covered all over it in uh, regimental stamps, sizes, maker marks. Uh, it has the linen cloth um, on the inside of the front and back plate. You know, an amazing badge on the front and some like a big piece of battle damage in here too. It's absolutely stunning piece. It's the first one that I have ever actually owned. Um, quite hard to price when you don't have something regularly in stock, it's quite hard to price. I think it's going on the website just under £4,000. Um, you know, that might well be a bargain for somebody, um, but it will certainly be something that sells fairly fast, I think, because you just do not see them. Okay, moving on, um, just here I have um, two World War II helmets, British. We've got the uh, um, British paratrooper helmet. Um, I'm not sure what date was in this one. Let's have a look. Yeah, 1943. Um, leather straps, uh, the yellow sorbo lining inside. You know, these always sell very quickly. And another netted helmet, British, is the Medical Corps with the Medical Corps insignia underneath the screen netting. Uh, moving on to World War One British items. Um, I've got a lovely Staff Officers Intelligence Corps Gore Blimey cap. Really nice. And then just here there is a magnetic First World War officer's um, helmet with the East Lanx Regiment uh, badge um, to the front. There's a lovely sand finish to it. And you can see the sand and paint finish has been put on um, after the regimental badge has been placed on the front because the, the badge to the front is absolutely covered in the, in the sand texture. Below it here, there is a uh, First World War officer's helmet with a, uh, a cover on. They are always popular. They always sell anywhere between 1,800 to 2,500 pounds. Um, it's a really nice piece, very good condition, the strap's all there. 
Um, and then we have uh, an array of Luftwaffe caps. So we've got a Signals uh, NCO's cap, uh, a Luftwaffe officer's white top summer cap, and then this is the star piece of the group. This is a double arrow um, Luftwaffe officer's cap in blue with the, the vented cockade. So um, it's the, uh, the cockade where it goes all the way through um, and you can see the hexagon uh, hash lines on the cockade, on the roundel there. It's a really special piece. Another Luftwaffe um, item we have um, is this, which is the blue Luftwaffe um, Tropheim, um, and this is the French made version. So they came in two versions the German made version, which has eight panels on the top, and the French made version, which has four panels. Now, unfortunately for me, the French made version is much, much easier to find than the German made one. The German, the German made ones with the eight panels on them, they sell for like three or four thousand pounds. Um, whereas this one I think is about 700, uh, 650. It's very nice condition, um, but you know, slightly inferior to the German made uh, example. Uh, back now with some German World War One items. There's a Prussian Guard Regiment M18 helmet. Um, and then this is uh, an extremely nice item. This is the First World War uh, Machine Gunners Officer's Shako. Um, I think this is the first one of these that I've ever owned, um, you know, and obviously the price uh, does uh, coincide with its rarity being £2,850, but you know, as I said, I don't get them very, you know, you don't see them very often, so obviously um, it's going to sell quite quick. Uh, in this update there's a couple of German World War II daggers. Um, and this very rare piece, which is the German uh, Luftwaffe survival uh, machete with the sawback blade. Um, then there are uh, German World War I buckles that we've got a Mecklenburg Schwering, Hess officers, um, Württemberg. Um, then there is this very rare um, First World War German gorget. Uh, there is uh, Großdeutschland. Uh, Panzer Division shoulder boards. Um, there's a small party badge um, in gold. Uh, the Dutch uh, Mousse Mousseert medal. Um, German First World War um, aviators commemorative medals, badges. An air gunner only badge from World War II. And then we get to this stunning piece here. Now, uh, many people won't know what this is. This is the centerpiece for the German uh, Schellenbaum. Um, the Algemeine troops, um, the, they, they, they were the only ones to carry this with their standard. I mean, this is the center star from, from the Schellen, Schellenbaum. Again, another piece which is hard to price because it's a part of a larger item. Um, quite often the, these flag bearers uh, poles were, were broken up into smaller pieces because they were too hard for the American soldiers to take back. Um, so each soldier would take a little piece of the Schellenbaum or, or of, the, of the standard bearer's pole. Um, but very nice condition nonetheless and there's someone out there who has the other parts um, so they'll be looking to complete their, their flag pole. Um, early British items here. Um, there's a lovely Hussars pouch and the embroidery on that and the gilding is absolutely stunning. And then this sabre tash here is the um, the Enniskillings um, Irish sabre tash. We've recently purchased a large collection of, of sabre tashes. Uh, I think I probably have about 12 or 15 coming into stock. So I wanted to get onto this Christmas update, um, what I think is the best one of the group. And you'll see in the new year, each week there'll be more sabre tashes um, coming onto the website. And then we come down back down to the end here. I have a couple of um, um, Italian fascist daggers um, and then a little group of French items so I have a French Foreign Legion kepi with its, with its white cover. Anything French Foreign Legion always sells very quickly. There's a, um, an officer's armband for the 4th fourth, 4th uh, Regiment and then this flag here is extremely special. This um, is a regimental flag for Marshal Patain's bodyguard. Um, it was a Vichy France uh, um, Regiment. So, um, a brief history. Patain, uh, he was a hero of World War One. Um, he was brought back 
um, at the start of World War II to try and save France again. Um, he failed and then he turned and actually formed a regiment um, to help the Germans and that became known as Vichy France and that is the flag um, from, from Marshal Pertain's bodyguard. Um, quite a historically interesting piece. And then lastly behind me here there's um, a couple of uniforms. There is a, uh, a tunic there, First World War tunic from the 3rd Cuirassier Regiment. That's a very nice piece. And then one of my favourite pieces is next to it, the Town and Water Paratrooper, Luftwaffe Paratrooper smock. Um, really nice condition. Um, it's got a lot of history. It's got a name inside. Um, paratrooper smocks, they took a bit of a dip in price or a stumble in price. They stalled uh, for a while. And just recently, I've noticed how the prices are starting to go back up of the, uh, the paratrooper smocks, both the splinter pattern and the Town and Water pattern. That's a piece that I would particularly like to buy, so if it doesn't get snapped up um, in the first few weeks of the update, I might end up buying that, keeping it for myself. So I hope you've enjoyed a brief um, overview of some of the items that are gonna be on this Friday's update. Um, I will try and do the update usual time, about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, then there's nothing else really more to say apart from thank you for your custom over the year. Um, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for all your comments. Um, thank you for subscribing. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. And I shall be back with a video um, just before New Year. And in that video, I will be featuring a new project which I am involved in. Um, um, and hopefully um, you all have a good Christmas and a Happy New Year.